A group of people are camping on the bank of a river, despite heavy rain and repeated warnings to evacuate the area. The rain causes the water level to rise, and eventually the campers are surrounded by water, hanging on for dear life. The group gets swept into the river before rescue teams could reach them, resulting in 13 people, including four children, drowning. Although a tragic event, the response from the public was more critical than sympathetic, pointing out how it could have easily been avoided if the group had simply moved away from the river when the local authorities warned them to. This is the story of the Kurokura River incident. The story takes place in summer of 1999, at a campsite near the Kurokura River, located to the southwest of Tokyo. On August 13th, a group of 25 people arrive at the campsite around noon, most of them employees and family of the same waste disposal company. Because this was during the height of the summer vacation season, the designated areas for camping at this site were already occupied, so this group, along with other groups, had set up camp next to the Kurokura River, having drinks and enjoying barbecue. At 3 p.m., it begins to rain. There was a dam located a short distance upstream of the campsite. It was a relatively small dam that required frequent discharging during heavy rain. At 3.20 p.m., a dam operator notices the water level rising, and warns people set up on the bank of the river to evacuate. Most of the people there complied, but not the group in question. The rain proceeds to get stronger throughout the afternoon, and at 7.30 p.m., alarms go off at the dam, signaling imminent discharge. The dam operator again goes to warn the group to leave the area at once, but is dismissed rather disrespectfully, pretty much being told to get lost. At 8.30 p.m., the dam begins discharging water, the increasingly worried dam operator calls the police, and as soon as the officers arrive, goes to warn the group again, for the third time. By this time, the water level had risen considerably, and the location the group had set up camp was no longer a river bank. Water was beginning to make its way across a low area of the bank, cutting the group off from land. In other words, they were essentially now on an island. The depth of water separating them from the riverbank was still at ankle depth, so it was possible to walk across easily. When the police go to warn the group for the third time, four of them decide to go home, and three decide to move their tent away from the river. But the other 18 are adamant, refusing to leave. As a side note, as previously mentioned, this group mainly consisted of employees from the same company. The president of this company was the most stubborn, telling the police they had no authority to force them to leave. He was also the one that told the dam operator to get lost. The fact that the boss didn't want to leave may have made it difficult for the other members of the group to comply with the police, fearing that the boss may harbor negative impressions towards anyone who didn't side with him. In any case, 18 of the original 25 people decide to spend the night in their tents on this island in the middle of the river. By the morning of the next day, August 14th, the rain had gotten stronger, and the water level continued to rise. One of the people who had moved his tent away from the river goes to check on his friends early in the morning. To get to the island, he now had to wade through knee-deep water, which can knock an adult over if the current is strong enough. He goes up to the tents and warns his friends that they should pack up camp and move to the riverbank, but they were fast asleep probably having too much to drink the previous evening. A short while later, a police officer would also go up to the tents and warn them yet again, but was also unable to convince anyone to wake up and evacuate. By the time the group begins to wake up, the rain had turned into a full-blown storm, and the water separating them from the riverbank was now at waist level with a strong current. Impossible to cross without a line or some kind of assistance, especially considering they had children with them. Panic hits instantly, and they scream for help across the river. The local fire department arrives within the hour, but they immediately determine they do not have the skills or equipment to mount this kind of rescue. River rescue specialists are called in, along with reinforcements from police departments, 
fire departments, and military. A few options were considered, but the storm was too strong for a helicopter rescue, and the river bank was not strong enough to have a large ladder truck come in. The only way to save the group was to somehow get a line of rope across the river, and have them come back to land hanging on to the rope. The dam upstream, hearing of this incident, stops discharging. But as previously mentioned, this was a relatively small dam, incapable of holding back large amounts of water. They are soon forced to reopen the valves to prevent the entire dam from collapsing. At 10am, members of the rescue team manage to get to the other side, risking their lives crossing a shallower part of the river further upstream. Around this time, media cameras also arrive on scene. You can see all their tents have already been swept away, and even though they are standing on the highest point of the island they were on, the water is now at waist height. You can also see one of the men requesting they be airlifted out of the river. He can be heard screaming, hurry up, and do your job. The rescue team attempts to launch a rope to their members on the other side, with this rope launching device. The first shot gets tangled in the trees, and the second shot gets tangled with the rope attached to the first shot. They eventually manage to get the rope across, but because of the strong wind and current, struggle to get the rope into position. At 11.40am, just as the rescue team was struggling with the rope, the group loses their footing. And are swept away into the river. One of the men manages to throw his one-year-old nephew to the riverbank, where he is rescued by onlookers. Three adults and one child miraculously manage to swim to the opposite riverbank. The remaining 13, including four children, are lost. Ironically, the president of the company was one of the survivors. The following day, August 15th, hundreds of personnel join the effort. They rescue the four people who had managed to swim to the opposite riverbank, and over the next couple of weeks would recover the bodies of the deceased from the river. On August 29th, the final body was found, and the rescue was officially over. The incident was covered extensively by various media sources, and the overall opinion of the public was criticism towards the group. Camping next to a river when it is raining is dangerous enough, but the group also ignored repeated warnings from the dam operators and police. They had put their own lives, their children's lives, and the lives of the rescue team at risk. And on top of that, taxpayers had to foot the bill for the rescue efforts, which well exceeded the equivalent of 1 million US dollars. Some of the blame was directed at the government, that they should have removed the group from the riverbank by force. But this argument would be countered that ultimately people should be responsible for their own actions, and police should not intervene in everything people decide to do. As a final note, the child that managed to swim to the opposite riverbank, who was five years old at the time, made a blog post several years after the incident. She claims she vividly remembers how her father let go of her mother's hand when she called for help, resulting in her mother's drowning, and that she has felt responsible for her mother's death ever since. What do you think of this incident? Let me know in the comments below. A big thank you to Korbachu, my first ever Patreon. Your support is greatly appreciated. As always, thank you for watching until the end. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. I'll see you next time.